Yeah, hello guys. You are welcome to the Java Academy. So this is going to be a very short recording and in here we are basically discussing the roadmap for mastering Java or for be, for becoming an entry level developer. So I have had people ask the question several times. Do I need what extent of Java do I need to know before I delve into Spring Boot? And what extent of Spring Boot do I need to know before I delve into applying for jobs and so on. So in this particular video, I get to explain and break down all of these things to you. Stay tuned. Hello guys. So, um, so basically to understand or master Java uh, up to the extent where you become a, an entry level developer, there are some aspects that are compulsory or obligatory that you know and understand. So uh, where we actually start from our work. So I've called this the Java basics. So all of these basics, they are things that you have to know. So and probably I think they are similar across all or most programming languages. So basically, this is like a broken down curriculum that you can follow and uh, so on like that. So in here, we, the first thing you need to understand is the concept of variables and then data types. And then, uh, so here you get to learn stuff like uh, long, double, boolean, and all the other different data types that we have. So this is like the foundation and the starting point for almost any programming language. So it isn't different for Java as well. The second point should be operations. So under operations, you get to learn mathematical operations, you get to learn logical operations, you get to learn different, all the different uh, types of operations that we uh, have in programming. Then the third point under the Java basics is selection statements or if else statements. So here you get to know how given a series of statements, you can actually select one based on the particular condition. And in fact, all of programming revolves around only three types of statements. You have sequential statements. And sequential statements are basically where uh, sequential statements are actually uh, it implies that whatever statements you write are actually executed in the order that you have written them. So the first line of code is executed before the second and before the third and so on. Then the second type of statements that exist in programming is selection statements. So selection statements is you have a set of conditions but only one of those conditions is going to be true. So you execute a statement based on if that condition is true. Then, of course, you have repetitive statements. So you want to repeat a particular action until something happens. Typically, an exit condition is reached. So you need to also understand repetitive statements, basically your loops or iteration. So here we have the likes of for loop, for each loop, for L, and so on like that. Then, seeing that Java is object-oriented in nature, you need to understand the concept behind classes, methods, and objects. Then after that, as an introduction to the world of data structures and algorithms, you need to understand arrays. So once you understand arrays, it's easier to understand other, uh, other data structures, the likes of linked lists, array lists, queues, and so on like that. Then here we have some more uh, advanced topics. So you also need to understand strings and how to manipulate them. So in the world of strings, there are quite a lot of methods. So you need to understand strings and know when and how to use the different methods that are available in the string class. Then aside that, we have the inheritance, okay? So inheritance here you, is one of the concepts of OOP. So you need to understand inheritance. And in my YouTube channel as well, I also have a video, a project-based video that would let you understand the uh, inheritance properly. Likewise, you should also know polymorphism and inheritance. Uh, okay, I think this is a mistake. The immense polymorphism and the interfaces here. Okay, and then the next one is abstraction. So these are basically the foundations of uh, OOP. So you need to understand all of this. Then aside that, you should understand the exception handling. Okay, this is to cater for errors that can uh, that might occur from your clients you ask your client to enter an integer they enter a text so you should be able to handle those kind of errors 
So likewise, generics and the collections interface. So under the collections interface, you have the likes of, uh, you have the list interface, and then under the list interface, you have the likes of array list, linked list, vectors, and so on like that. So this here introduces you or pushes you into the world of data structures and algorithm proper. Okay, then here you have lambdas and streams. So lambdas and streams, uh, they allow you, they provide you with very convenient methods for manipulating this collections uh, interface. So this year, with these two year, Java Basics and Advanced, we are actually good to proceed to Spring Boot. Okay. Meanwhile, while learning Spring Boot, you must understand that learning Java 2 doesn't stop. You can continue to increase your knowledge of Java, but at the same time, you're actually implementing what you have learned inside of Spring Boot. So that's basically how it. So here, I also have <coughs> a number of goods to have. So it's not like if you don't know all of these guys, you can't go into Spring Boot. No, you can move into Spring Boot, but then it's very good to actually understand uh, all of these guys here. SQL, uh, in fact, as well as no SQL uh, queries as well. So you need to, it's very good to understand them. And then as well as concurrency, which can be quite difficult. So it's very good to have then manipulating files and Java IO strings. Then design patterns. I think this year is probably a lifelong learning challenge, so it never ends. <clears throat> and then garbage collection as well. So all of this here are basically good to have and things that would further embellish and garnish your knowledge of Java. And lastly, you need to now proceed to Spring Boot. Don't forget, all of these guys say you don't need to know them before you proceed to Spring Boot, but then so if you are trying to master Spring Boot, I broke down the different aspects of Spring Boot into this. So it's very good to understand Spring Core or Spring Web. So you have how you create web applications, how you combine uh, HTML, JavaScript with Spring Boot and Java. So it's, this is a good to have the first one here. It's good to know and so on. Then there's also Spring Aspect Oriented Programming, which I will be making a video on very soon on my YouTube channel. And then it's very good to understand Spring Security for securing your application and handling things like uh, user, per user permissions, user roles, authorization, and so on. So meanwhile, if your target is to focus on backend development, then definitely REST APIs, you can't do without them. So you need to basically understand the REST APIs as well. And then, <clears throat> The next point here is databases and the Spring Data GPA. So typically, since no application is complete without a connection to a database, so you need to know how to query and then perform database operations. And um, yeah, so you basically need to understand databases and the Spring Data GPA. And then lastly, I would mention the microservices. So you need to understand the the concept of microservices and some of the tools provided by Spring to for creating microservices. So basically, this is just a very short and summarized uh, curriculum of Java. And I can assure you that if you can go through this judiciously, you take your time, make sure you understand every concept, repeat anything that you don't know. So definitely, you are on the way to becoming uh, a very good uh, Java developer. All right, guys. Nice to have you guys. So see you again in the next video. Bye for now.